Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing you God's truth today. Can we just pray? Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we honor you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your truth that has been unveiled by your Spirit. We yield ourselves to the workings of your Spirit to bring us understanding and wisdom. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our hearts are open to receive our daily bread today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Amen. Jesus name. Amen. Now listen, as the word of God is coming forth, burdens are being removed, yokes are being destroyed. Praise God. Listen, go for the word of God. See, don't be comfortable in a place where the word of God is not being shared or ministered or even you as an individual. If the word of God is not coming to you, how can you be comfortable? See, when last the, the Lord speak to you, you should be concerned about those things, especially in this season. Very important. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, now we've been studying the book of 1 Corinthians and we are in chapter 6. Now, I was reading something yesterday from Matthew chapter 18. Let me just run down uh, Matthew chapter, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and then... We go over to Matthew. Let me explain what I was explaining about the authority of the church. Now it says, There any of you having a matter from verse 1? Against one another, go before the law, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints. Don't you know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the, and if the world shall be judged by you, are we unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Praise God. If the world is going to be judged by you, how come you cannot handle the smallest of matters? See, it says, verse 3 says, Know ye not that you shall judge angels? Think about this. This should... Ah. You know, sometimes you read some things and you wonder if that's really in the Bible. <laughs> it is God. <laughs> you know, I, I remember one time I was talking to a Jehovah Witness brother, you know. He came around to preach like they normally do. And then he was sharing. And they don't let you talk when they are, when they are sharing. You know? So I kept quiet and I was listening. I allowed him to finish everything he was saying. But it, there was something he said that made me pause. and like, hey, hold on. I want to read a scripture to you, then you will continue. He said, what scripture? And then I read that scripture. And when I read the scripture, he was like, um, hold on. Is that in the Bible? I said, yes, it's in the Bible. And I showed it to him. He looked at it. Next he said, let me check the back of your Bible, whether it is the authorized version. And then he, he opened, you know, this first page. And he saw there containing Old and New King James, Old and New Testament, authorized King James version. And then he looked at that scripture again. <laughs> you know what he said? He said, um, okay. When I get home, I'm going to check my own authorized version to see whether this thing is true. Praise <laughs> God. Why? Because there are certain things you just don't believe that they will be in scriptures. <laughs> Praise God. Like this says, Know ye not that you shall judge angels? You will judge angels. Think about it. Praise <laughs> God. How much more things that pertain to this life. You see how God keeps you the, the, the level, the height God has placed you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, now let's go back to Matthew chapter 18. I was reading something very important because I was telling you some things yesterday about the authority that the church has that they don't know. They don't know they have such authority. They don't know how to use it. See, so, okay, we're not supposed to go to court as brothers. Yes, what are we supposed to do? It's written here. Jesus said exactly how to go about resolving disputes amongst brethren. Now, this is how we do it in God's kingdom. Praise God. How? He said it here. We don't go to court with one another. We don't. All right. He said, now like I explained yesterday, he didn't say it's wrong to go to court. He says to take a fellow brother. That's what he's talking about. To take a fellow brother. So you take it and you go before an unjust judge. Not unjust judge because he is uh, he's, uh, he's going to 
take bribe or something. No, 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 no. He's unjust because he's not born again. He doesn't have the spirit of God. Praise God. So he's not justified. That's why he called him unjust. So the one who is not justified by faith. So he cannot receive the truth from the Lord. He will judge according to the appearance. Now that's the problem. Praise God. All right then. Jesus speaking here and he says, from verse, uh, let me just take a rundown again from verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Note that Jesus said, Two of you. He said, When someone offends, when a brother, notice, he said, When a brother, this is when anybody offends, he said, When a brother offends you, take the matter to him between two of you alone. Now, why did he say two of you alone? See, because your, your focus is not just to shame the brother or to say, you hurt me. Your focus is to win him over to the truth. See, so, so if a brother does something wrong and, and I see it, whatever, whatever it is, maybe a brother says, okay, um, please borrow, loan me this money. I'm going to pay you back in two weeks or in one month or whatever. And he said, okay, you take based on that agreement i give it to you see now actually you know we we need to grow up to the place when it comes to things money money things like that we don't loan one another money praise god we give to one another see that's how the kingdom of god operates in the kingdom of god it's it's oh thank you lord jesus i wish you can take this it's wrong to loan a fellow brother money you give to them he said, but, 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 hey, 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 hey. But my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. You know what that means? As long as I have it today to give as a loan. Thank you, Lord Jesus. As long as I have it today to give it as a loan. I could actually have given it as a seed. That's how we act. That's who we are. So, so in the first place, you know, I'm using this loan, loan to teach you a lot of things. You, you shouldn't be excited that a brother, a fellow brother is even owing you in the first place. Because I'll tell you what, if you go before the Lord and say, Lord, what do I do concerning it? I know what the Lord's going to do. The Lord's not going to say, don't worry, I'm going to make him pay back. The Lord will tell you, let it go and I will pay you back. Because you see, when that brother needed that loan, he was the poor amongst you. He said, no, 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 I know this brother. No, 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 no. You see, that's the mistake we make. We think the poor are those people who are begging on the streets. The poor simply means the one who doesn't have. He doesn't have. So he, he needs help. He needs support. Now, I'm not talking about the careless one who, who lives anyhow and makes himself poor. You know, that's what I'm talking about. But, but someone who, he, he's, he's working, but you see, he has issues for what, whatever reason. He couldn't meet up his rent. He couldn't meet up his bill. He couldn't meet up, you know, stuff. And then he comes to you, please, I, I need help in this area. So he says, come, please come and borrow me this amount of money. And he says, okay, take, I'm borrowing you that much. Now, now, you know, there are different, there are different, uh, what's, the, what's the word now? You see, when we say borrow, you need to understand. See, not now you can borrow money, not because you are in need, but because at that moment you just want to um, use. And let me give you, uh, for example, okay, I'm somewhere right now. I need to get something. I don't have the money with me, but I have it somewhere. See, so I say, oh, can you loan me this amount of money? I want to get this thing. When I get back to this place, I will give it to you. Now that's understandable. And then when I get back, I give to the person, see. But when someone is in real need, I don't have, I'm in need. And the only thing I can think about is to tell you, loan me this money. When I have it, I will pay you back. Now that is wrong. Don't do that to fellow believers. I pray you understand this truth. Now, but what, you know, let's just, whatever the issue is, if a brother has an issue with another brother, he says, go to him one another, go one another. So if a brother says, oh, if a brother hurts you, you go to him and say, you hurt me. What you did wasn't right. And he said, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. And then you teach him why it is wrong. 
And then he learns and say, wow, I never thought about it that way. Now, when he learns, see what Jesus said. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. You have taught him something. He has, he has repented. He has grown. You want him. See, so, so the virtue in you came upon him. Praise God. Now, but if he will not hear thee, so if you try to preach to that person, if you try to talk to that person about what he has done now, and then he say, look, forget this thing. Uh, 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 just leave me. I'm not going to listen to you. He said, but if he will not hear thee, take, then take with thee one or two more. That in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. So take two other people with you. And go, hey, you know why? Peradventure, he doesn't understand the way you communicate it. He should be able to understand by the time you take two other people, someone among the three of you should be able to communicate it in a way that it will minister to him. Now he says, Jesus said, and if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. Now you see, you take a brother to him. You say, oh, or, or two brothers to him, or sisters now. Sorry, um, this thing, now first of all, the people you are taking to him must see the truth concerning the situation. And they, oh, oh, he's actually wrong. And then they take it to him. If he doesn't hear them, he says, bring it to the authority of the church. Now, when he says bring it to the church, what's he talking about? Bring it to the government of the church in that area where you are. You bring it to the government of the church in that area where you are. You can be taken to an elder. Now, that's someone who both of you believe is a Christian. You know what I'm talking about? And he is respectable. He has the word of God in his mouth. Now, it can be your pastor. It can be an elder in the church. Now, when I mean elder, I'm not talking about the gray-headed people. I'm talking about those who skillfully use the word of God and those who know that the spirit of God is upon their lives. And that's who an elder is. Someone who, who can take authority in the name of Jesus and speak for the Lord with confidence. You understand what I'm talking about? So now that, that can, you see, because there are some people who are pastors, but they can't even exercise authority. See, anyway, now I want you to follow me. And if you shall neglect to hear them, tell it to the church. But if you neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an hidden man or an a publican. Did you see that? If he refused to hear the church, if he refused to hear the authority that both of you subscribe to, see, if he refuses to hear, then he says, hey, that fellow is not born again. You know why? Because by the time you told him, the Spirit of God is supposed to convict his heart. By the time the other two brothers come, the Spirit of God is supposed to convince his heart. By the time the church comes, the authority of the church comes, the Spirit of God is supposed to come. Now, if after all this, there is no conviction in his heart, he is telling you, that's why he says, take him as, meaning that person is not saved. Now, what do we do when, when you find out the, the situation that that person is not saved? He tells you what to do. He says, he says, treat him. Let him be unto thee. No, no, you look at him again and say, ah, I've been thinking you're saved. Now I realize you are not. See, I realize now I'm dealing with an unbeliever. That's what it means. Then he says, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth. Now this is where Jesus began to talk about the authority of the church in this issue. Now we read these scriptures in isolation. But he was saying something before he said it. Whatsoever you bind on earth. Meaning if the church looks at the whole situation and said, This brother is not born again. He is not born again. See, even if he says, hey, that's you people's own. And now I'm not talking about people conspire in church to, to deal with a, a brother. I'm talking about real, you know, real, real issues now. Praise God. He says, treat him as an unbeliever. And then whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth is losing. It. So whatever decision that is taken by the church, it is binding. That's what Jesus is saying. It's binding. Now he says again, if two of you, verse 19, if two of you shall agree on it as touching anything that you shall ask, he's still talking about the authority of the church. Now this goes in every issue. The, the church, you know, ah, the church can dissolve a marriage and the marriage stands dissolved. 
say, ah, eh, but, but, but God hates divorce. He hates divorce. But you see, when one person is not in agreement, when one person is not subject to the authority of the church, and they, they actually are not living together in peace, you know, for example, if, if, if life is being threatened, now, someone can, be, someone can be an unbeliever and get married to a believer and they are living, in quote, peacefully. You understand what I'm talking about? Now, you leave them and, and let her life preach the God. But where the person's life is threatened, then the church has authority to put them aside. We, the church has that authority. Now, after doing all these things that Jesus said, he said, you have the authority to put them aside. You, you can decide this marriage is dissolved. And if the church says this marriage is dissolved, then in heaven, see, in heaven, it stands dissolved. So, but God said, what God have joined together, let not man put asunder. Yes, he said, let not man put asunder. See, <laughs> see. So you, you take it to an unbelieving judge and the judge puts it asunder. But, but when you say the church puts, ah, what, what God have joined together, let not man put asunder. We are not men. It's <laughs> God. We are not. You see, now why am I saying this? Because in the church, they will receive the wisdom of God to deal with that issue. Praise God. I've got to stop you. But I hope you get what I'm saying. Because we're going to go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 tomorrow. Praise God. I pray for you that the understanding of God will flood your hearts. And you will know the path of truth to follow and to walk in. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.